same way if it wasn't for one fella, the literary genius that is Charles Dickens. He helped reignite our love for the festive season way back in the 1800s, and we keep going back to him. A Christmas carol is just that gem yes. of this time of year, isn't it? Uh, but long before he introduced us to Ebenezer Scrooge, Dickens spent several years in Italy, and actor David Herward is here now following the famous writer's footsteps for a brand-new documentary. And, David, uh, Merry Christmas. Thank Welcome you very much. Merry Christmas, the, the pair of you. Yeah, I, I was reading this and, and I thought, um, I would never have thought Dickens in Italy. You think Dickens, a very English writer. Exactly. I, in Italy. Exactly. So that, that's sort of the kind of nub of this whole documentary, is rediscovering this classical writer, somebody who I thought was a quintessentially English writer who didn't really have anything to do with me or, you know, I sort of missed him when I was at school. Um, but so here I sort of rediscover that he's he actually he's got a very European perspective and that Italy was this sort of second love of his. And he travelled through Italy. He did his first public reading of A Christmas Carol in Italy before he, he uh, um, before 10 years later, re becoming a professional, reading his works professionally in Birmingham. So, and he did his, he, he wrote a book called Chimes, which was, which, which, which uh, he discovered in Genoa. So Italy is a really big part of Charles Dickens's sort of... Chimes. Well, I think we've got a little bit of a clip of you on the chimes, ah, actually. Chimes. Go ahead. Go. Wow. I'm in a bell tower. So tell me, um, are you familiar with Charles Dickens? Sì, il conosco assolutamente e uh, Dickens è rimasto impressionato delle campane che suonano nel centro di Genova. Yes, I know, I know, and I'm, I, I'm, I know that he wrote a book called Chimes about these very bells. David, can you try? I will, I will do my best. I'm in town. I'm in town. I shall be here all week. And like, can we get a studio round of applause for yeah. my yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So they think it was like some kind of fire drill in Genoa, David. It was well, like they, frantic. They, they go off all the time in Genoa. There's so many bell towers and they, 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 they do go off all the time. And in fact, one, one went off right in the middle of our interview, which was superb. Um, the best journeys, David, are the ones where you don't know a huge amount about the subject. Sure. And that was the case with you. It was a bit of a, a journey of discovery for you, wasn't Completely. it? Completely. As I said, I mean, um, you know, I'm a comprehensive school boy and I sort of just kind of... I kind of missed Dickens, you know? And as an actor, I guess I've done a lot of classical plays. So the novel... Dickens as a novelist sort of just missed... just kind of passed me by. So when the idea was put to me, as soon as I said, he, you know, we're going to film it in Italy, I was like, I'm in. So, but but it was but I sort of rediscovered that how his observational writing style, how funny he was as a writer, how descriptive he was as a writer, how talent obviously how talented he was as a writer, and also how he was really concerned with poverty and and real people. And I think that was it's a, a real di journey of discovery for me. And hopefully we're sort of retelling that to the audience tonight and on Thursday night, where we uh, show his his kind of love and his brilliance in writing uh, ghost stories. So it's a real sort of reintroduction to a, a classical novelist. He must have been quite well travelled, you know, because he does bring poverty into, into his stories and, and real life and, and, you know, the political circumstances. Completely. What do you think he would have made of today? You know, if he was writing a, a play or something, oh. Or a book today. What do you think it would be about? I, I, I think he would definitely be writing about fractured societies, um, the kind of dis dis dismantling of the welfare state, the sort of this, the, the sort of you know the. Um, in, you know, the poverty gap that we've got, the, the wealth gap that we yeah. have right now, I think he'd be very concerned with those, with, with those things. And they're just the cost of living. Because it's we are at Christmas and it's difficult for a lot of people to sort of make ends meet. And I think that, that would be... He'd be, he'd be, it'd be... It'd be Christmas Carol um, part de. Yeah. You know, he'd be really sort of kind of homing in on those things. He, right he was now. so prolific. I mean, 15 novels, forget the novellas and the short stories and all and that. And the he, ghost stories, yeah. He would be fueling Netflix now if he was alive. Absolutely. Think. He definitely would be a prolific te television writer, I think. And he actually did write, in a way, quite cinematically. He was one of the first writers to sort of set scenes, one in Italy, then the next in London, then the next in Britain. So he, was, he had this sort of very cinematic style in, in, in his writing and actually did use, as at the time in the Victorians were... There was this massive sort of growth in technology in Victorian England. So there was cameras, there was photographs, there was radio, there was the tra train network. So printing presses were kind of going off. So there's this explosion in sort of technology. So he was taking advantage of that by sort of travelling and 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 using uh, 
slides in his in his public readings, so projections, and that's where the ghosts came. That's where Chris, oh, the whole right. idea of yes. Christmas came. It was the first time that sort of projections. You, you, you could go to a stage show and somebody would project a, a picture of a ghost on a bit of glass, oh, and people brilliant. were going, "Oh, well, how, how did they do that?" Yeah. You know. So it was uh, it was it's an amazing time, and he took full advantage. And Christmas Carol wasn't. Successful initially, was it? Was a bit of a uh, turkey, yes. wasn't it? Did you, I, and this is why I didn't. These are some of the things that I did not know. Is that originally, what did he, he decided to self-publish a Christmas Carol, and he wanted to make it a really beautiful book. So he sort of bound it in this beautiful red leather um, cover, and then sort of uh, embossed it with gold and all this fanciful stuff. Look at that beautiful, beautiful book. Yeah, that actually that's that it? was actually a copy wow. of the book. Gorgeous. But it cost him an enormous amount of money. So uh, it actually cost him. It actually cut into the kind of earnings of the book. So it didn't actually, it didn't actually make a lot of money on a Christmas card. It wasn't that popular. But, so that's one of the reasons why you then up and went to Italy for a year because it was cheaper to live. Uh, you know, and many credit uh, Christmas Carol as reinventing Christmas again, don't they? Completely, yeah. There was a tradition of, of Christmas and ghosts kind of being, uh, I think way, way back when there was, that was an earlier tradition, but Dickens sort of reinvented that with Scrooge and, uh, the, uh, and, and A Christmas Carol and sort of reintroduced to the, Victorian, the Victorians the idea that Christmas was also about spectres and ghouls and things walking in the, you know, in, in, in the night, you know, so it's... Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a beautiful... And Christmas Carol is such a wonderful story. Lovely, yeah. Ghost, uh, Scrooge seeing his future and his past and his yeah. present, so... But, and a nice happy ending, which we like. Of course. Absolutely, yes. yes. Uh, I love your enthusiasm for it. I can't wait to watch it. Oh, yes, and look, there's another one on Thursday night oh. as well. Thursday, right. Ghosts and Phantoms. Please take a look at that as well. So there's one tonight at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Sky and, Arts. Yes, right, yes. And then you're back on the 21st with the... Back on the 21st with um, Phantoms and Fiction, which is all about ghost stories and his love of ghost stories. Oh, we cannot wait for that. Thank Wonderful. you, David. Thanks, Thank David. You. Great Lovely. to see you. Cheers. Thank you so much.